by the end of this lecture, we want you to be able to describe the role of fungal infections in, this, in disease and to describe the mechanisms of action of antifungal drugs, their pharmacokinetics, their side effects and their clinical uses. Fungi are eukaryotic microorganisms that include yeasts, molds and mushrooms. While they share sim similarities with other microorganisms, such as their size, they are also quite different in others. This is illustrated on the diagrams in the slide. Here, if we compare the cell structures with some bacterial cell types, we can see that they have cell membranes and nuclei. However, they differ substantially in the proteins uh, and lipoproteins that are external to their cell membranes. For example, instead of peptidoglycan or LPS found in bacteria, we can see that the um, fungi have something called beta-glucan. And in addition to, uh, to their own set of proteins that they have uh, called nanoproteins. Fungi are living microorganisms. They include single cell round fungi such as yeast, multicellular filamentous fungi such as molds, or a combination of the two such as dimorphic uh, fungi. The clinically important fungi can be classified into four main categories. These are illustrated uh, on the slide here and include these such as Cryptococcus neoformans. Uh, yeast like fungi that produce a structure co called a mycelium, such as Candida albicans, uh, filamentous fungi that produce a true mycelium, such as Aspergillus fumigatus, finally, dimorphic fungi which may grow as yeast, or filamentous fungi such as Histoplasma capsulatum, shown here in the diagram. While most fungi are harm harmless and are environmentally useful, there are over 50 species that are pathogenic in humans. Fungal infections, also known as mycoses, can be classified a number of different ways, either by their presentation or location, such as superficial or subcutaneous. They can also be classified as opportunistic or they can be systemic in nature. Systemic fungal infections, for example, cause more than 2 million deaths annually. Um, and in particular in those who are immunologically compromised, such as people with, that are HIV positive. The table shown in this slide here um, show the top 10 most significant invasive fungal infections. The most common fo fungal foot infections are shown in the pictures on the right. These include tinea pedis or, or uh, athlete's foot, and uh, oncomycosis or toenail infections. Athlete's foot is caused by the same type of fungi, which are dermat uh, dermatophytes, and that cause ringworm. Things like damp socks and shoes and, and uh, warm, humid conditions favour the organism's growth. Toenail, toenail infections can occur as a result of the fungi that cause athlete's foot, but they infect the nails instead. These fungi often live harmlessly in their skin, but they can sometimes multiply and lead to infections. Um, things that we need to consider when dealing with the foot are things like drug formulations, uh, in particular the use of creams, uh, sprays and powders that are used to deliver antifungal agents, and we will discuss these examples in the coming slides. This slide is a reminder of the uh, principles of antimicrobial chemotherapy. As with drugs that target other microorganisms, the principles remain the same. We want drugs that target unique uh, genetic or biochemical pathways that are unique to the pathogens, or that the drugs should be selective to target proving isoforms unique to the pathogen without affecting the human versions or human forms. Uh, or finally, that the drugs should target metabolic requirements that are specific to the needs of the pathogen that they need to survive. It is important, therefore, for um, us to consider structures or pathways that are unique to the fungi and would therefore not affect or harm uh, human cells. This slide shows the current classes of drugs that are used to treat fungal infections. 
Each one exploits a unique pathway, a unique structure, or a unique isoform in the E cell that is not present in the human cell. The targets for these drugs are present in structures like the cell membrane, the cell wall, and microtubules, or they target unique enzymes or isoforms of those enzymes that are different enough from the human version of the protein. The drug classes seen in the table are also shown in the diagram on the right and where they act in the cell. In the cell membrane, for example, the polyenes target specific sterols, which we'll discuss shortly. In the cell wall, the echinohendons target the synthesis of a component of the cell wall. In the microtubules, Ursiofulvin binds to the structural protein there and prevents cell division. While other drug, uh, drugs, uh, drug targets include the enzymes like uh, thymidylate synthetase, a sterol demethylase, and squalene uh, epoxidase. We will now discuss each one of these in a bit more detail. The first of these are the inhibitors of nucleic acid synthesis. As with most organisms, DNA and fungi is made up of A's, C's, G's, and T's. We call these chemicals nucleotides. Nucleotides consist of a nitrogenous base, so adenine, guanine, cytosine, thymine, uh, a deoxyribose sugar, and three phosphates. In order to survive and, and in order to divide, to make more fungi, they must be able to source and or synthesize these chemicals. Two of these nitrogenous bases, the C's and T's, and also U's, are known as pyrimidines, while the A's and G's are known as purines. The pyrimidines are often taken up into cells via a specific transporter in fungi and then modified by a series of enzymes. One of these enzymes, shown in the diagram here, is thymidylate synthesase. <clears throat> By using pyrimidine analogues, that is chemicals that are similar to the pyrimidines, such as glucytosine, that resemble the C's and the T's very closely, but have a one atom difference, as highlighted here in the diagram on the bottom right. These can be used to inhibit the thymidylate synthetase enzyme, so they compete with the C's and the T's for this particular enzyme. Plucytosine is active against a wide range of systemic fungal infections, which are mainly yeasts. The plucytosine is selectively taken up by cytosine permease, shown here at the top of the diagram, which is only found in fungal membranes and therefore shouldn't be taken up by human cells. Once taken up into human or in, once taken up into fungal cells, it is converted to fly 5 fluorouracil. Uh, by an enzyme called cytosine deaminase, also shown in the diagram here. The 5-FU is then converted to 5-fluorodeoxyuridic acid uh, and it is uh, converted by an enzyme called uridine monophosphate pyrophosphorylase, uh, also indicated here. This molecule known as FMUMP inhibits the thymidylate synthesis, which normally converts DUMP to DTMP, that is uridine monophosphate to thymidine monophosphate. And this is the molecule that's normally needed for DNA synthesis and hence for cell division, because if cells are dividing, they need to make more DNA. And if they can't make this DNA, they can't divide. So this molecule is mostly fungostatic, that is, it prevents growth rather than causing death in many fungi. In terms of the pharmacokinetics of flucytosine, it can be administered orally as a capsule, shown here in the diagram on the right, or it can be administered by injection intravenously. Once absorbed, it is widely distributed to many locations, including the CSF or cerebral spinal fluid. The majority of the molecule is excreted on change via the kidney, meaning it is not really metabolized. The estimated half-life is between three to, three to five hours. And in terms of the side effects or adverse effects, as we call them, um, bacteria and fungi in the intestine are able to convert the flu cytosine to 5-fluorouracil or 5-FU, which can cause local adverse effects. So while it doesn't go into human cells, our 
gut microbiota and also the fungal um, cells that are resident in our gut can convert some of this fluzidazine to 5-FU. This is a well-known cancer chemotherapy drug, which is quite toxic. And there has been reports of dose-dependent uh, effects, side effects, including bone marrow suppression, leading to leukopenia or thrombocytopenia, which is a big reduction in white cells, or it's specifically thrombocytopenia platelets. It causes nausea and vomiting because of the toxicity and diarrhea, and in some cases, liver dysfunction. It is therefore not surprising that this drug is contraindicated during pregnancy. Uh, clinically, it has many uses. Typically, it's used in combination with another drug called amphotericin B to treat systemic infections. However, re resistance does arise in some species due to a mutation in the permease or the deaminase enzymes if used as a single agent. Typically, though, it is used to treat conditions like candiasis, uh, cryptococcosis and chromomycosis infections. The next class of drugs that we will discuss all target either the cell membrane or the cell wall. These structures are unique to fungi and are therefore ideal targets for drug interference. The cell wall and cell membrane are not only different from bacterial cells, but they're also different from human cells as well. Shown in the diagram here are noticeable differences, particularly the nanoproteins shown here on the surface, the beta-glucans, and the chitin um, that's found in the cell wall. In addition, the cell membrane has noticeable differences um, with different component molecules such as ergosterol. In terms of drug targets, the major classes we will discuss now target either the molecules themselves in the cell wall or in the cell membrane, or they target the enzymes that inhibit their synthesis. The first of these drugs are the ergosterol inhibitors. The ergosterol itself is necessary for the maintenance of the plasma membrane structure and function in fungal cells. Um, ourselves, as mammals, we use cholesterol instead of ergosterol. Um, as is shown in the pathway on the right here, um, we can see that there is a multiple uh, step reaction required to synthesize the ergosterol from the bottom or at the, at the bottom. Uh, the beginning of this pathway is quite similar to our own pathway used to synthesize cholesterol in cells. And the first of the drugs we will mention here target a specific step near the beginning. So chemicals called allylamines and also similar chemicals called benzylamines inhibit the conversion of squalene to um, lanosterol by inhibiting an enzyme called squalene epoxidase, shown here on the diagram. So this is a, is a monooxygenase enzyme, and by inhibiting it, we, it prevents the synthesis of ergosterol and therefore prevents the synthesis of the membrane as a result. So these inhibit fungal growth, so they're called fungostat fungostatic, but they can also be fungicidal as the accumulation of squalene. So if the squalene doesn't get converted by the enzyme because the enzyme is inhibited, the squalene gets uh, um, to accumulate within the cell. And this becomes toxic to the organism. Examples of the class include the allylamines, which include a drug called uh, terpinophene, and also known as lamisil, and also nephitin, <coughs> excuse me, ne nephitin, whereas in the benzylamines, we have a drug called butenophene. Looking briefly at their pharmacokinetics, we can see um, that terbenefine ter can be given orally or top topically as a cream or a spray. It is 99% bound to plasma proteins when taken orally. Um, it gets metabolized in the liver with about 40% bioavailability and it has an extremely long uh, TIA for half-life of about 300 hours as uh, the terbinafine accumulates in the skin, nails and fat. On the other hand, 
uh, naftaphine uh, is only available as a topical gel or cream, and butenafine is also topical with a similar spectrum of activity. There are some adverse effects with these drugs. They are not re recommended for those in renal or hepatic failure or um, who are pregnant. For most people, the adverse effects are usually mild and include things like uh, GI disturbances, rashes, headache or dizziness. There can be some very rare cases of hepatotoxicity of something called Stevens-Johnson um, syndrome and neutropenia, which means a reduction in the number of neutrophils in you know, white blood cells. Drug interactions can occur, um, particularly leading to plasma levels being increased with the antihistamine drug called cimetidine and uh, decreased plasma levels with the anti-TB uh, drug called rifampin. Clinically, these drugs are used to treat uh, dermatophytes such as tineopedis, otherwise known as athlete's foot, tineocurus and tineocarporis. A different class of drugs called azoles target the same pathway but a different enzyme at a later stage in the ergosterol synthesis pathway. The imidazoles and triazoles are groups of synthetic broad-spectrum fungostatic agents. They prevent ergosterol synthesis by inhibiting the enzyme 14 alpha sterol demethylase, which is a cytochrome P453A enzyme, shown in the diagram here and involved in the conversion of lanosterol to ergosterol. The resulting decrease in ergosterol and the accumulation of 14 alpha methylsterols disrupt the tightly packed acyl chains of the phospholipids in the fungal membranes. Destabilization of the fungal membrane leads to dysfunction of membrane associated enzymes and may lead to cell death. Also, they inhibit the transformation of candida yeast cells into hyphae, which is the invasive or pathogenic form. Examples of drugs from this class include uh, clotrimazole, otherwise known as caniston, ketoconazole, myconazole, econazole, and itraconazole. The pharmacokinetics of this class vary with oral and topical administration for most members and IV administration for itraconazole. Itraconazole is metabolized by the liver to an active metabolite. For most members, there is little or no central nervous system penetration. There can be some ad adverse effects, most notably liver toxicity with ketoconazole and itraconazole. There are also some drug-drug interactions, including with antacids, with histamine antagonists, and the immunosuppressant drug called cyclosporin. Ketoconazole, for example, inhibits cytochrome P450 enzymes in the adrenal gland and in the gonads, which causes decrease in steroid hormone synthesis. In some individuals, this can cause adrenal insufficiency, gynecomastia, which is the formation of fake breast tissue in males, and impotence. In addition, these drugs can cause nausea, vomiting, anorexia. Fungal resistance can arise due to a mutation in the fungal cytochrome P450 enzymes. Clinically, they are used to treat a wide range of infections, including uh, B dermatitis, Cryptococcus neoformans, uh, histoplasma capsulatum, uh, co cocodoides, dermophytes, and uh, candida species as well. This table shows the variation mentioned previously in the pharmacokinetics of four members of this class. The table describes the plasma half life, the cerebrospinal fluid penetration, and uh, drug interactions and the extent as well of the inhibition of mammalian uh, sterile synthesis. The next class we will discuss are the polyenes. These are fungal uh, membrane inhibitors. Uh, these are usually um, natural antifungal substances derived from streptomyces cultures. They work by binding to ergosterol and they disrupt the stability of uh, the fungal cell membrane. As shown in the diagram on the right here, they produce channels or pores that alter the permeability and therefore cause leakage of intracellular contents and ultimately lead to cell death. Also, 
um, this generates reactive oxygen species upon uh, oxidation of the drug. The affinity for uh, something like amphotericin, which is a member, is 500 times that for ergosterol compared to cholesterol. So these drugs as well are fungicidal and or fungostatic, depending on the concentration of the ergosterol and also on the fungal species that it's targeting. Examples from this class include the drug amphotericin B and nystatin as well. Looking at the pharmacokinetics of this class, we know that uh, amphotericin B is highly insoluble and therefore is supplied as a suspension. It's poorly absorbed from the gastrointestinal tract, so it's usually administered intravenously. It has a high plasma protein binding and a slow excretion via the kidney. Nystatin, on the other hand, is administered as a topical cream. And these drugs do have some adverse effects and their toxicity limits their clinical use. Uh, some concerning adverse effects include immediate systemic reactions, which can um, cause immediate uh, release of cytokines, including interleukin-1 and tumor necrosis factor alpha, which can lead to fever and chills and, in severe cases, uh, hypertension. The effects on the kidneys or renal effects include um, some vasoconstriction, which uh, lead to renal ischemia and a reduction in the level of potassium otherwise known as hypokalemia. Uh, blood effects or hematological effects include uh, dose-dependent anemia and also a reduction in the erythropoietin concentration in the plasma. Research has led to new lipid formulations of these drugs that have been found to be less toxic than the original forms. And clinically, these drugs are active against most fungi in use. In fact, they are the gold standards for infections caused by aspergillus and candida are called are the cell well one uh, synthesis inhibitors and the main group of chemicals in this class are called the achinocandins which are semi-synthetic lipopeptide derivatives of something called echinocandin b which is found naturally in a fungus called aspergillus nigellans they work by inhibiting the beta 13 glucan synthase or fks1 enzyme preventing the synthesis of beta-1,3 glucan, which is one of those uh, molecules we discussed earlier that's unique to the, um, uh, to the cell of the fungus. Beta-1 glucan is a glucose polymer uh, necessary for maintaining fungal cell wall structure, and any loss of beta-1,3 glucan results in a big change in osmotic stress and ultimately leads to lysis of the fungal cell and eventual cell death. Resistance genes of this enzyme have been identified in some candida species and examples of drugs in the class include caspofungin, anidulafungin and mycofungin. Pharmacokinetically, all three agents are only available in parenteral form, meaning for injection only. Some other properties include caspofungin is highly bound to plasma proteins up to 97%. Um, it's metabolized in the liver by N-acetylation. It penetrates the central nervous system poorly. If we look at the adverse effects, there are some drug and drug interactions with um, cyclosporin, for example, and this increases the concentration of caspofungin. And also the antiviral drug, uh, nilfinavir, uh, phenytone, carbamazepine, and dexamethasone all decrease the concentration of caspofungin. The drugs from this class are well tolerated generally, with only minor effects including headache, nausea, fever, rash, and in very rare cases, uh, hemolysis. Clinically, all three agents are fungicidal against candida species and fungostatic against aspergillus species. They can be used to treat um, esophageal candidiasis and also aspergillosis of the uh, lungs, the pulmonary aspergillosis. The final class we will discuss are the inhibitors of fungal mitosis or cell division. Within this category, a drug called griseofulvin is the major example. This is a narrow spectrum agent derived from a fungus called penicillium griseofulvin. It works by inhibiting fungal mitosis by binding to tubulin and microtubule associated protein, 
and disrupts the formation of the mitotic spindle. This is shown in the diagram on the right. It is also reported to inhibit RNA and sometimes DNA synthesis. It has been found to accumulate in keratin precursor cells and binds tightly to keratin in differentiated cells. Uh, it's generally fungostatic in most cases. Pharmacokinetically, the drug is administered uh, orally, um, which is of limited use, or topically as well as, uh, as a cream. It is poorly soluble in water and absorption is variable as a result. It is a potent inducer of the cytochrome P450 enzymes and adverse effects include gastrointestinal upset, uh, headache, photosensitivity and hypersensitivity um, in some cases. There are some drug and drug interactions. For example, it increases the metabolism of warfarin and of uh, oral estrogen contraceptives, uh, the contraceptive pill. It is uh, contraindicated during pregnancy with some reports of fetal abnormalities if taken. Clinically, it is used to treat infections of the skin, hair and nails due to uh, trichophyton, microsporum and epidermophyton species. So in summary, uh, fungi are free living microorganisms that exist as yeast, which can be single cell or round fungi or molds, which can be multicellular filamentous fungi, or a combination of the two. These are known as dimorphic fungi. Fungal infections or mycoses can be superficial, subcutaneous, and they can either be opportunistic or systemic. Clinically important infections include Candida albicans, Aspergillus fumigatus, Cryptococcus pneumoformans, pneumocystis, and tinnipedis, or um, athlete's foot. Existing drug uh, drugs target the nucleic acid synthesis pathways, the synthesis of cell membranes and cell walls, and fungal mitosis. Classes of drugs include the polyenes, echinocandins, azoles, allylamines, griseofulbin, and uh, flucytosine.